Hey up, and welcome to Corey's Corner. Uh, I've been sick the past few days, I don't know, like two, three days, I've just been awful. Just, like, my right eye feels like it's about to pop out of my head, it's like, it's too, like, the, the ball, the eyeball is too big for the socket, it doesn't make any sense, but that's how it, how it feels. And that's the reason this video is out two days late, so I apologise for that, but uh, we're back, you know, at the at the recording studio or whatever, and I'm, I'm going to make a video today to make up for the delay. I guess I'm going to make a video that I've wanted to make for a long time now and that is a story time video or really a, a collection of stories about my family and uh, my family is a bit weird and I'll say this right now actually I'll put a disclaimer here uh, if anyone from my family sees this video I'm probably screwed either way but I'm not going to give personal details away obviously you know I want to say even though like I do complain and stuff and it might sound bad like I do love my family or most of them anyway and so like this is a you know pretty lighthearted video don't take this too seriously um, but to understand my family you need to understand that there's everything that happens in my family is kind of political there's like factionalism in my family there's lots of different like groups vying for influence and stuff and there's a lot of there's a lot of rivalries and stuff and just bad blood and and just bitterness really it's quite childish actually the way i describe it might make it sound kind of not cool but it makes it sound kind of interesting like you know families you know, british families going at war kind of like game of thrones or something it's nothing no not, i haven't even seen game of thrones but it's nothing interesting like that it's just a bunch of basically a bunch of man children fighting with each other or man women children um fighting with each other about stupid things and inheritance and pathetic stuff like that and it's like life is too short do you know what i mean and this is what i mean when i say i love most of my family people talk about family relationships and they're like you know you like your family is given to you and it's like you know your friend people the term friends and family gets thrown around a lot and it's like you make friends but you're not you don't get to choose your family you know a lot of people think family is very important especially like more traditional people who talk about you know like especially you see this a lot in the red pill like andrew tate probably talks about this a lot he's like oh family family so important and stuff i don't know if he's he said that specifically believe it or not i don't listen to andrew tate a lot but i don't i, I like i don't think family's that big of a deal like i said like i do like love my family i do like them i guess Yes, maybe love is too strong of a word but like if someone in my family did something wrong to me i wouldn't be sticking around just because they're in my family and this has happened before where people in my family have not done stuff wrong to me but just like i distance myself from people because i don't tolerate bad behavior you know and i don't think you should either and just because someone's in their family it's not a free pass to be a dick basically so the first person i want to talk about is uh i don't know if i need to give names to these people or made up names i'm just gonna call this guy my uncle i'm not related to this guy and not even like uh you know not by blood not legally i don't even know like i don't actually know if anyone in my family is related to this guy like because you know i have like grandparents and uncles and aunts and stuff who i'm not related to but they are in my family but then there's this guy and this guy isn't even like re related to me in that way like i don't even know how this guy is like a member of my family he's an older guy he's like in his 50s now he doesn't really get invited out to like family get-togethers and gatherings and stuff anymore because of his behavior and i'm going to talk about that so when he was younger my mum actually he's been an, he's been i guess a member of the family for like i don't know a while now like three decades maybe and my mum talked about like when she was introduced to him or when she met this guy he was trying to join the navy and the thing about him he's actually colorblind this guy and if you don't know you can't join the navy if you're colorblind because obviously they're hoisting flags and stuff and you need to be able to see what they mean and you can't be you know you need 2020 vision it's the same reason i can't join the army well, not the exact same reason but i'm blind in one of my eyes completely blind can't see anything out of it and my eyesight in the other eye isn't that good either to be honest uh so i couldn't join the army i made a whole video about that actually i'll put that in the corner if you if you care but to summarize i was in the army cadets which is like the army but for kids and i i didn't stay for the actual army because i couldn't you know a lot of people go to the army cadets and then they join the army later but i couldn't do that because of my eye in hindsight it's definitely a good thing um i wouldn't join the army even if i could now and i'm very glad that i didn't end up doing that uh, but i made a whole video about that i mean go and watch that if you want um, this the, the army does actually kind of relate to him though because I was I remember I told my family when I joined the cadets and I didn't tell them about me leaving because the, the way I left is I just basically stopped going um, I didn't have like an official reason to leave I never officially quit but my whole family thought like I was still going so I, when I'd go to these family gatherings and stuff like loads of people would like grill me about the army and they're like oh how's the army going and stuff and I'd be like yeah it's good it's good and stuff and really I wasn't in it anymore you know it's like these people who like these men who get fired from their jobs and they just don't tell their families and they just go out to 
quote unquote work and they just sit in like a parking lot for like eight hours a day that's basically what i was doing i mean not exactly but you know what i mean um but yeah this guy i'm talking about this like 50 year old guy my quote unquote uncle i need to give this guy a name i'm gonna call this guy uh bob i guess this guy bob would just grill me all the time about it he's like so what unit in the army are you in and stuff and i don't know there are names for these like they'd be irish rifles and the royal grenadier and the dragoons and stuff and i don't know what all the shit is i don't i don't even remember what unit i was in because i would just lie and tell him oh i'm in this unit but i didn't like even know in the first place what unit i was in so i couldn't even tell him so i was just like oh i don't know um and he's like well how can you not know when you're in it and stuff and like i mean i probably had a reputation as a kid and probably still to this day to be honest, of being very, uh, I don't know, forgetful, I guess, if that's the right word. I mean, when I went to high school, everyone used to think I smoked weed, like, all the time, every day. Like, people would ask me, like, are you high right now, just because of how I acted. And I never did, I never touched weed, that wasn't the case at all. But my, you know, my blood pressure is probably very low, um, and I just, I speak, like, in real life, I speak very slowly most of the time, especially with people who I don't want to be speaking to, which is most of my family, to be honest. You know, I just, I like, I'm just a very mellow person generally. It might be hard to believe from my videos, but I, that is who I am. So, you know, me not knowing something like that or me forgetting wouldn't, is it's not exactly out of character for me. Um, I know some people would be like, oh, why can't you just tell your family that you quit the army? And, you know, I don't know exactly why, because I don't feel like anyone would have really cared except maybe this guy. But he doesn't really have a leg to stand on, did he? Because, I don't know. Maybe, he, maybe he'd say so. I don't know. Maybe he'd be like, oh, well, you have the opportunity and I don't or some shit like that. I don't know. But yeah, anyway, he couldn't join the, join the Navy. He really wanted to join the Navy. For those of you who don't know, in the UK, there's this city called uh, Portsmouth. It's like this. It's like a port and it's a city and it's where the, uh, like the Royal Navy is docked most of the time. And he went to university there and he would con he had, had a phase where after he got, well not even kicked out because he was never in it, but after he failed to join the Navy, he would just go back and forth to Portsmouth all the time. And I don't know what he would do there, just wander around and look at the ships and stuff. Like, I don't, it's a bit sad really, I don't know, kind of pathetic. Yeah, he re he went through a phase where he was kind of crazy to be honest. He, you know, he has, like there's mental illness, so there's a lot of that in my family. And this guy had like bipolar disorder. Um, he got like diagnosed with that and he ha it wasn't like too bad but it was pretty bad like he was a bit nuts but it wasn't like awful and he ended up getting a job as a prison guard and this is all before I was born by the way this is in like the 90s I guess the 80s or 90s and so most of this information comes from other people in my family mainly my mum I actually called my mum before I made this video like <laughs> like just to do like an interview or like get some research and stuff and like um, just verify some of the facts of this uh, video so you know, if something sounds unbelievable, and I'll cover this in just a second, but if something's like, if you're like, oh, that's not true, well, blame my mum, don't blame me, you know, but this guy got a job at, at a prison, and when I called my mum, one of the things I asked her is, where did this guy, uh, where did he, what, like, what prison did he work at? And apparently he worked at, like, a young offenders prison, and it's, so, like, a young offenders prison, it's like, it's not a proper prison, but it's just for young people, and they, the idea, I guess, is that they might change their life, but they never do, to be honest, and this guy was a guard there. And he was actually on the floor, you know, patrolling and stuff and working with the prisoners. And he got fired. I don't know if he got fired. I'm pretty sure he got fired from that job. And the reason he got fired, I was always under the assumption, is because he snuck in, like, pornographic magazines to the prisoners. Which is a pretty disturbing image, considering most of them are probably teenagers. Like, I'm pretty sure he should be in there alongside them in the cells. But I always thought that was the case. And I called my mum and I asked if that's true. And she basically said that um, it might not be true. And I was like, what do you mean? Why, you know, why is it not true? And, and like, where did you even get this information? And basically it came to like, that she basically just completely made it up and it probably isn't true at all. So yeah, I don't know. Like my whole, f like this is, see, this is why I don't trust or, or have association with people in my family. They just make shit up. But you know, I could have left that in the video, but I didn't. So that's how you know I'm trustworthy. Uh, but yeah, anyway, but the, either way, whether it was for that or some other crap, I mean, he was losing his mind anyway, so it's not even, to me, it's not out of the question that this did happen. And he got fired from that job or he left, and he was on some kind of, like, bipolar medication for a while, but he went off them, and then his, like, wife, because this guy somehow had a wife, believe it or not, she ended up, like, leaving him over that. She was like, if you take your pills, um, I'll stay with you, but if you don't, if you if you stay off them, then I'm going to I'm gonna leave you, and he, he chose to stay off them. And to me, that's crazy. Like, I mean, to be honest, if my wife told me, look, do this or I'm going to leave you, I'd do anything. I'd shove a cattle rod up my ass, to be honest, if that's what it took to get a wife. But this guy apparently thought that the pills were too much, so he went off them. And he really went off the deep end after that. He started, he went through this phase where he would, like, carry around a copy of Mein Kampf with him everywhere he went, like a paper bag edition of Mein Kampf. And I don't know what, 
I, I don't I asked my mum like what did he even do with it like did he re- this is like the 90s so I wasn't born at this point and even if I was I was way too young to remember and I probably wouldn't have been around him anyway to be honest um, but I don't know like I asked like did he read it did he do anything with it and apparently he just carried it around I really don't know what he was thinking um, but anyway one day he went on the Isle of Wight ferry if you don't know the Isle of Wight is a little island near England and it's a little ferry that goes back and forth and he went on there and he had a mine camp with him, and he was dressed up as like a naval officer, or like he—I I guess he still wasn't over the navy thing. And so he dressed up as a naval officer. You know, he had this like coat and like shoes and stuff, and like the hat. And then he ended up getting arrested, like actually, like um, like detained and stuff, for impersonating a naval officer was the charge. And I don't know if that's a crime. This, again, this is all from my mum, and my mum doesn't. She doesn't. She doesn't know a lot about this kind of stuff, I guess. But yeah, I mean that—that's something I guess like that's a low point you know I feel like I've had some pretty low points in my life but that's a bad situation to be in I feel like and he ended up becoming a regular police officer after that he was just like a normal policeman I don't know how you go through all that and you still can be let into the force but I guess like I don't know desperate times I guess I don't know and I remember like as a kid he would always show off this kind of crap like he'd talk about like how like he and I feel like a lot of these stories were probably made up because he'd talk about how he'd like chase some guy through people's houses and you know he like threatened to tase people and stuff and it's like he clearly thought like he was cool and stuff and I was just a little kid and there were other little kids in my family who would kind of ask him this stuff and he clearly loved the attention and stuff and I you know you can't really hate on him for that I guess but this guy some of the stuff he would do would be pretty annoying to be honest because as I got older he talked to me a lot about history he studied history at university and he would talk to me about history all the time and he'd be like um well not all the time but whenever i'd see him which would be like once a year maybe once every two years at, at most to be honest because pete like everyone in my family hates this guy like no one likes this guy at all um people are always just complaining about him and i like for for good reason to be honest it, it might not sound like it from everything i've talked about so far it, like he sounds crazy but he doesn't sound like a bad person necessarily but um he is kind of a dick to be honest like one time i remember he was talking to me about george washington's teeth and he was like, do you know what material these teeth were made out of? And I said, I, d- I didn't know, so I just guessed. And I said, well, maybe wood. And he was like, he just didn't say anything. He just stared at me. And I thought, well, that must be wrong. So I said, uh, maybe metal. And he was like, no, wood. Ha, ha, ha. You know, and I was just thinking, you dick. And I looked it up later, years later. I just uh, happened to see this. And it turns out it's like a well-known myth. And it's not even true. Like, his teeth weren't even made of wood. So it's, like, doubly sad. It's like, you're trying to you're trying to prove your intelligence with, like, a 12-year-old child. And you're not even correct about what you're being a smart ass about, you know what I mean? That's pretty sad. Um, but apparently his area of expertise at university, or his area of study, I guess, was Russian history. And this is pretty annoying, to be honest, because whenever, like, we're together, like, as a family, somewhat, like, especially, like, um, like my grandparents will bring up the fact that this guy's, like, some expert on Russia. And I remember back in, I don't know, I might have to censor some of the things I say here, but back in February uh, 2022 there was like a get together and this guy was talking about like how he has like some unique perspective on the uh uh situation in ukraine can i say it i don't know and like he he knows like what no one else knows you know and like he sees things a special way you know and like i was just thinking you dick like no you don't you know and especially my granddad like one of my uh, grandfathers is um because i'm very fortunate all my grandparents are still alive and one of my grandfathers was, uh, or is very, very, like, anti-Russia. Like, I talked about this in my Christmas video, and he's always complaining about Putin and stuff. And he was like, um, oh, but, you know, your Uncle Bob, I, I made up the name Bob, and he doesn't even, yeah, but he says stuff like, oh, Bob is, like, some expert on Russia. He sees it, he sees things the way that no one else sees them and stuff. And it's like, let's be honest, how does he see things? He probably has the most, like, basic take on the situation. He's like like just a basic like nato expansion take and he's probably thinking like anything that's not like the mainstream narrative to him is like some crazy red pill thing and it's like and i'm not even commenting what i think about that i'm not this isn't political at all but i'm just saying like what annoys me is people trying to act smarter than they are like have a little bit of humility do you know what i mean and shut your bloody mouth too anyway but that's him and he's pretty annoying but i i barely see him to be honest i like i haven't i don't i must i don't know when's the last time i saw him I guess like last Christmas, not this Christmas, but like Christmas 2022. So yeah, like over a year ago now, and I'm perfectly happy to keep it that way. Um, and I don't think I'm going to see him over this Easter. And I really like, I don't care for this guy. I don't, yeah, he's pretty annoying. But someone I see even less is another person I'm not related to, but this guy's like an in-law, I guess. This guy's like my uncle-in-law. I'm not even going to bother giving this guy a fake name because I don't even use them. But 
this guy is married to my aunt, or was, I should say, <laughs> was married to my aunt for a while. I remember they met at university. My mum was telling me they, um, and because again, I wasn't around for this, but they met at university. And this guy, ever since like day one, apparently was a huge pothead. Like he smoked a lot of weed, and it the result of that was it basically like fried this guy's brain. This guy's brain was completely like rotted to the core. You know, I know a lot of people smoke weed and stuff, and I don't smoke weed, and I don't approve of it. I don't think, like, I'm not a scientist. I don't know if it's good for you, but I don't think it's good. I mean, just use your common sense. It's obviously it's not good for you. And it, yeah, like whenever we'd be around this guy, even like later on in life, like all his hair fell out. He's completely bald. You know, the Norwood Reaper really came for this guy. And I, I'm not saying that's like related to the weed, but I'm just saying like he looked he looked like uh, an egg. He had a really shiny head like really shiny like you could see yourself in the reflection of it and he but he would always be tired and he'd always feel ill he's like oh, i need to go for a lie down i feel and he would never go out anywhere it's like if we were at like someone's house he'd be there but if we went out for the day somewhere to like visit someplace he would never come because he'd always be like staying in and my aunt would be like oh he just doesn't feel very well and stuff and it's just like oh give me a break anyway but he was like a very irresponsible person his job was being a gardener um, but he'd never do any bloody work. He would just work through, like, contracts and stuff. Like, people would... He didn't work for someone. He was, like, his, quote-unquote, own boss, you know. And people would, like, hire him. They'd uh, they'd call him out to work on their gardens or whatever. But he would never get any call-ups because he'd never, like, advertise, I guess, because he was so lazy. Um, and I guess to get him straightened out, my aunt decided that they'd have a daughter together or a child. I mean, you don't choose what the gender is. But they decided they'd have a kid together and they ended up having a daughter. That's kind of the worst bit of the situation. I think this whole situation, and I'll get into the main meat of this in just a second, but is this situation is kind of... Like, it wouldn't even be that bad if they didn't have a daughter. And, you know, I think having a kid involved in these kind of um, domestic disputes, it, it, it's always bad, you know. And it's like you really, you really need to know who you're dealing with before you have a kid in regards to your partner because it's really not fair to have a kid and like not set them up for success. And like I'm not like a lot of it isn't in your control, but it's like, you know, there's genetic factors that hold a kid down a lot of the time or push them up. And then there's their you know family situation as well, and that like accounts for probably less than genetics, but like how you're raised also has an impact on how you'll be later in life. And it's like, if you can't control genetics, at least put the odds in their favour with that, you know, but they don't, you know, these, I see pe- like people, families having kids, people who definitely should not be having kids, having children. And um, I wouldn't even really care if these people didn't get forced on the rest of us, you know, and that's another thing, like aeroplanes and people who bring kids on aeroplanes and stuff, I just can't like, really, it's kids, I do not like kids, I have to be honest with you, I don't like kids, I know people talk about, like, having kids and stuff, and, um, you know, like, the purpose of life is to have loads of children and stuff, and I don't know, maybe for some people, but not for me, I just, I cannot stand them, to be, I gotta be, I gotta be real with you guys, I'm, you know, I'm never gonna lie to you guys, I do not like children, I mean, my, this is my cousin, I guess, this, this daughter they had, she's alright, she's like 10 years old now, she's fine, I guess, maybe it's fat, because it's family, I don't know, but generally, especially really young kids, like toddlers, and, you know, once they get to 10, they're fine, I guess, but when they're toddlers, they're little demons running around let me tell you they had this daughter with the plan of uh, straightening this guy out this is my mum's theory and this is my mum's sister my aunt but she's like quite a bit younger you know than my mum and all my mum's other siblings they had all these other kids and then they had my aunt and I don't know if she was an accident but she they had her like 10 years later like there's this huge age gap with all of my like relatives because um, this is the youngest kid and she was basically my mum says and I obviously again I, obviously I wasn't around for any of this but my mum says that she had like favourable treatment and you know with youngest siblings like that's definitely a thing maybe it's a stereotype but you know stereotypes come from somewhere and I think younger siblings generally do get favourable treatment for whatever reason and the middle child usually gets ignored and obviously I'm an only child so I just can't relate to that at all I don't know I don't I can't comment on that, but yeah, my mum kind of holds a grudge against my aunt. Like they don't, they like they don't get along. This is why I said there's like rivalries and factionalism and stuff, and a lot of people vying for the attention of their elders and stuff, like siblings and stuff. Um, and like, yeah, that's an issue. But th- that's kind of what I was talking about, like with my aunt and my mum. They don't get along, but they won't openly say they won't get along. And this is something with women as well. You don't see this with men really is that men will openly compete with each other for whatever, I mean, we in the black pill space talk about dating a lot of the time, but it's not even just dating, men will just compete for resources, full stop, very openly, like, they, they'll fight each other physically, or they'll, you know, if it's a, a corporate setting, they'll, you know, compete with each other over, like, a promotion or something, whereas women compete a bit differently, they don't cooperate entirely, but they compete by making it look like they all, um, are cooperating with each other like you see these videos these ridiculous videos of like some of the ugliest women you've ever seen 
saying they're like tens to like how would you ladies rate yourself and they're all like i'm a 10 i'm a 10 i'm a 10 and it's like you're not you know it's like that lizzo thing you people talk about lizzo and they're like and women are like oh lizzo's so beautiful and then as a man the response is like okay well i think you look like lizzo and they get offended and it's like well if she's beautiful why is that a problem and the reason is because they know full well that these sub five women aren't beautiful at all they're not tens they're not even close to it but the reason they say it is because they all make an appearance of cooperation with each other which as a whole brings women up it it elevates if all women agree they're like we're all tens it brings up their value on the sexual marketplace so let's say that as an analogy let's say there's like medical companies let's say there's five medical companies that are all selling a drug right and this drug costs about i don't know two dollars to make a box of pills i don't know right and let's say all five of these companies get together and they all have a monopoly they don't let anyone else make this um this drug it's not you know they lobby and stuff which is basically just a fancy word for corruption and they put some bill in place that no one else can make this drug except them and this does happen in real life by the way and what they'll do is then they'll say to each other maybe hey look this costs about two dollars to make a vial of these pills let's say we'll charge fifty dollars let's set that as the market price and we'll all agree to cooperate that's what women do right they all agree we'll say we're all tens and therefore our value goes up right whereas men are more like a traditional competition between businesses where they'll try and bring the price down to compete with each other men will try and uh, eliminate the competition whereas women will try and cooperate and it's not that women don't compete with each other it's just that by making it look like they compete they actually by showing off the fact that they do compete they'll bring their, their market value down right i hope that makes sense anyway my i was talking about my mum having a, a garage on my sister and my point is you i kind of got to take a thing she says about this with a pinch of salt you know my mum can be a very bitter person as i'll get to in a minute but my mum's theory on them having this daughter is that my aunt wanted to straighten out my uncle-in-law and have him then become more responsible and take care of the kid and like i said my mum is obviously bitter and take this with a, a column of salt to be honest but i think she's actually right about this because it just makes sense um you know and there's no way any any sane rational person and i know we are talking about women here but there's no way that any sane rational person even if it is a woman would look at a man like my uncle-in-law and think that guy is fit to raise a kid there's no way she obviously thought he was going to change after this kid was born and spoiler alert he didn't you know it's like when people have failing marriages i mean it basically is when people have failing marriages because that's basically what happened and to try and save it from divorce they have a kid it's like it's not fair to the kid you know this kid is not it's like people say a dog isn't just for christmas a kid isn't just for saving a divorce you know and i know i know i said i didn't didn't like kids earlier and i i I stand by what i said you know but it's still not fair to the kid you know and i was a kid once and they are human you know a kid is not just uh something you can have a passing interest in it's like oh maybe this will save our marriage no this is a new life you're bringing into the world you need to do it responsibly and you can't be having a kid with some weed smoking moron who can't even hold a damn job but you know that's my piece anyway to no one's surprise this marriage ended in absolute disaster he ended up cheating on her which is crazy to me that this guy even has the ability to uh or he even has the capacity to cheat and i don't mean from a moral perspective i mean he is uh he is <laughs> he looks probably something like this i'd say uh, this is a good approximation of what he looks like his head is slightly less cylindrical but no less bald I mean, there there are generally probably more strands of hair in my arsehole than there is on this guy's head, right? And this guy ended up cheating on her via a swingers website, which is not even something that I knew existed. I knew swingers are a thing, but I didn't know there were whole websites dedicated to them, although I guess I shouldn't be surprised with the amount of degenerates in the world. But anyway, and swinging is like, basically, I can make a whole video on, like, swinging and, like, polyamorous relationships and that kind of stuff. I probably will. Um, I'm not going to get into it here, but basically, this guy was keeping it a secret from from his wife from my aunt and she found out and the way she found out is actually she had a friend whose husband i guess was also on this website and then he cheated on his wife via the website and the wife found out somehow uh, some other unrelated way and was then looking on the website and i don't really know why she was looking on the website Uh, the whole situation sounds kind of fishy to me but either way she was looking on the website and she just happened to see this guy on the website she happened to see my uncle on my uncle-in-law on the website and then recognized him and he was like and she was like oh that's and then she told my my aunt and then she found out and it was this whole situation and i don't know like how many women he cheated on her with but given the fact he had a profile on this website and was continually doing this like i'm like i i'm talking about this i've always kind of made the because the way my family talks about this they always talk about it making the assumption that he was cheating on her with loads of people for all i know he, he never had any success but the fact he was even looking is obviously obviously like not good for considering you're married and you have a kid 
um but i I was like thinking like how is this guy managing to cheat i just realized just now as i'm recording like it's possible he was just like imagine that it's possible he just had no success at all and that's so brutal imagine that like trying to cheat on your wife because she probably doesn't have sex with you anymore and then you don't even manage to get any kind of success on the app at all on this website at all and then your wife finds out and you have to get divorced that is the most brutal thing ever that's like that's something that would happen to me not that i would ever cheat on anyone but i mean like just the worst luck i have the worst luck and i guess i kind of i just run in the family because i'm not related to this guy but i guess it just leeches off everyone in my family i don't know it like it like rubs off on people but yeah ever since then i mean this was a few years ago and ever since then my um my aunt and her daughter who like i said she's like 11 probably now 11 12 i guess maybe um ever since then they've just she, i mean she's kind of had a midlife crisis herself my aunt and she they're always jetting off to all over the world to like i don't know they went to like the Seychelles, like these islands and stuff, and they went to the Maldives and they flew on a plane there. And then they're making like they're making posts on social media, being like, "Oh, we're in, you know, we're in this lovely area of the world, and it's going underwater because of the use of fossil fuels." And it's like, "How did you get there? How are you any better?" You know? And she's like, "Oh, we need to raise awareness and stuff." And there was this one thing they did. This was pathetic. They went to this. Uh, I don't know. They went on holiday somewhere, and they were on this boat, and they were going like whale spotting. And apparently, there were like loads of boats looking and there was they they all found a whale and all these boats converged on the whale and apparently the whale was in distress and this story is just such bullshit for so many reasons it's like the only reason like anyone in my family knows about this is because she posted it on social media but she didn't post any of the photos she took she was like i'm deliberately not posting the photos because i don't want to raise awareness for this and it's like first of all okay just don't make a post then you don't need to make an update post telling people that you're not going to post the photos believe me no one cares you get like three likes on each of your posts one of which is from your mum people do not care okay that's the first thing second of all so you went whale watching you went diving with the whales you took photos you do you did all this stuff but you don't want to raise awareness because it's bad what they do to whales it's like they're hardly harpooning the whales they're just going to look at them you know the whale was in distress it's like how do you know do you how do you know what the whale was thinking and these are boats. These aren't submarines coming after the whale. The whale can dive down any time it wants. I just think the whole situation was so ridiculous. And that, that sums up a lot of the women in my family and the way they act. They're all very um, virtue signaling, you know, attention seeking. You know, look at me, look at me, look how good of a person I am. And that's something women will do a lot. That, for women, that's the equivalent of looks maxing in women is uh, virtue signaling. They'll try and make themselves look like such a good person. And it's sick. You know, it really makes me sick because it's not true. None of it is true. You know, you're not a good person. And um, you're posting this stuff like you are. And it's just not true at all. You know, and on this same holiday, they were off on some some stupid all-inclusive resort somewhere. And apparently, like, her daughter, so my cousin, I guess, or niece, I don't even know what relation this, this is, um got pushed out of the way of some got pushed out of the way from the serving bar by some russian tourists and she the way she told us because these are always the way i uh gather this information it's from being at family gatherings and stuff and people sit around telling these stories and i don't i don't care to be honest but over the years i've heard some drivel coming out of people's mouths let me tell you my family their asses would probably be jealous of the amount of shit that comes out of their mouth and she's telling us this story oh these russian tourists pushed her out of the way and it's like why does it matter that they're russian why is that a relevant detail that needs to be brought up you're clearly only bringing it up to gain sympathy from other people because you know the anti-russian sentiment in my family that's all you're doing you know and i know i'm bringing up russia like a weird am- amount of times in this video but it's really like it really is everywhere i remember at my old church i used to go to back in my hometown like my priest would talk about russia and putin and how bad he was and it's like what are you even like why are you bringing that up like how is this relevant to anything you know what i mean and stuff and he talked about like how he didn't support the invasion of iraq like back when saddam hussein was in charge my priest was like oh, i supported it back in the day but i regret that now i don't support it anymore and it's like okay, well you're making basically the exact same mistake but anyway whatever it's not even the point right and again i'm not taking size i don't want if i don't want anyone to spin this politically like if you're about to leave a comment telling me why i'm stupid politically you can keep it to yourself to be honest with you because i'm not making a comment about politics i'm just saying right there's no place for politics in family discussions I don't want to say there's no place for politics necessarily in church, but generally I don't. There's certainly no need to bring up Putin in like some random church service. Do you know what I mean? It's just my opinion. No disrespect to my priest or whatever. I'm just saying, right? Yeah. To talk a bit more about the rivalry between my mum and my aunt, I remember about a year ago I talked about this in some other video when I was talking about at my university. There's like these lizards that they take care of, or well, don't take care of. But that's a whole other point. Don't even get me started on that. Um, but I was talking about how I came up to my university for an open day because it's quite a drive. And, um, you know, from my hometown to my university, it's quite a distance. 
And so I came out for this open day where the university basically just shows off to prospective students, hey, this is what the university is like, you know, you probably want to come here, and they try and advertise it, basically. But that's not even relevant, really, to the story. Um, but I was coming up for this uh, university open day uh, with my mum. Basically, like, after it was all said, we had the whole day after it was all said and done, there was nothing, you know, weird about it, apart from the reptiles, but that's a whole other point. Um, but on the way back home, my mum got a call from her mum, my grandmother, who's the mother to both my mum and my aunt my grandmother was like annoyed at my mum and she'd gotten a call from my aunt and basically my aunt was annoyed that me and my mum hadn't come to see them on the way and it's like we have to go massively out of our way to see these people but instead of being an adult and this is what i meant at the start of the video when i said like man man children or you know man you know woman children woman children i don't know anyway this is what i meant when i said that it's like if this happens to you first of all you have no right to be annoyed about this because you didn't make your wishes clear that you wanted this to happen you can't be annoyed at someone for not doing something you didn't tell them to do and i know that's a trademark of women that's like their favorite thing to get annoyed about but seriously there's that and then to not even so you, you're annoyed at something someone's done not even to tell them but then to tell your mum at the age of like 40 or however old you are to do this it's ridiculous you know it really isn't sane <laughs> you know and my mum got a call basically from my grandmother complaining, being like, oh, you didn't go and see them and stuff. And my mum basically told her where to shove it, which I was in support of, to be honest. And I don't get involved in family drama, really, to be honest. But this situation was just so crazy. Um, just the entitlement, you know, just the entitlement. And uh, recently, this is uh, this is just after I'd got back from Australia, actually. If, if anyone remembers, I did that like a year ago. And because I have family in Australia, and me and my mum went to visit them. And I also worked there for a bit, but that's irrelevant. But basically, my mum later got a text message from my aunt saying, like, oh, we see going halfway around the world is no problem, but going a bit out of your way to fe see your sister is too much to ask, and it's just like, shove it up your ass, you know? And this is what I mean when I said, uh, if my family does stuff to me that's like, I feel like I've been wronged, I just wouldn't associate them with them anymore, you know? And I get it's, it's more complicated than that, you know, I get it's not that simple all the time. Um, but obviously like my mum and my sister like I said they don't openly fight very they very rarely do that like this situation is probably the most open conflict they've ever had I think or at least when I've been alive uh, I'm sure as kids they had more open conflict but like if this happened to me because my mum and my aunt obviously still talk and it's like this never happened basically if that happened to me I would just block and I wouldn't talk to these people anymore you know if I had a sister who said something like that to me I'd tell them to go fuck themselves probably and just block them because it's just I don't need to put you know tolerate this behaviour you know like I've had stuff like that happen to me and I'm not, I'm not going to get into that because I kind of want to wrap up the video but I've had um like older members of my family do stuff to me or say stuff to me that sounds that makes it sound like I've been like molested or something I don't mean like that I just mean like I've had them talk to me in a very demeaning way and you see this a lot of the time with boomers is they think they can talk to people like they, they're dirt you know and they can totally insult them and I'm not a confrontational person but I am a person who doesn't take shit from people and what that means is if someone is insulting me I'm not going to say anything I'm not going to confront them because I am a pussy in person I don't deny that I'm not trying to act tough but I just won't talk to them anymore if I if they're at a family function I'm not going to go, okay? It's me or them. And I've done this with loads of people in my family. Well, not loads, but anyone who steps out of line. You know, I've been at weddings and stuff, or a wedding where, like, this guy... I know I said I wasn't going to talk about this, but I was at a wedding where this guy was walking around, and this guy, I think he has, like, polio. I don't know what's wrong with him. He's an older guy, and back in the day, these kids had, like, polio, and it fucks you up for life. This guy's, like, head is permanently, like, craned forward. Like, he, I don't know, like, he's always... He's, he looks like he's always looking at his feet, but it's just his bone structure. And there, it, we, there was this wedding. These people were getting married. I don't know who was getting married, but I, I was dragged along to this. This is... I was, like, 15, 16, I guess. Um, this is just before COVID, actually. And there was this, like, hallway, and it, it was, like, a busy... This is, like, the party after the wedding. There was loads of people, you know... Uh, walking around like farts in the bloody wind right no one's looking where they're going and this guy is walking around and obviously like it's pretty difficult for this guy to see where he's going so he's like looking up I stand out the way of this guy and I see him first of all and I don't really know I don't know what this guy's relation is to me you know there's a lot of people at this wedding the first thing I think to say to him is like chin up mate you know it won't be much longer um, but no I didn't even know but apparently he did have a medical problem but I stood to the side of the thing and he um he had this like walking stick I, so, and I stood to the side of the hallway so he could walk past and apparently he felt like I was still in his way even though I totally wasn't so he didn't even say a word to me this guy can speak he's not you know he's he has a 
disability, but he can speak. But instead of speaking to me, apparently I was because I'm like a young person. These you know these older people think young people are so entitled and they they need to respect their elders and what other other whatever other crap. So this guy has his walking stick and he basically just taps me or like knocks the side of my leg and points like jabs me and then points over to the other side of the wall like I'm a dog like pointing at me. And I want to say to this guy, you know, go to hell. Who the th- well, I mean, you probably are going to pretty soon. Like who the hell do you think you are? You know, to treat me that way just because I'm like I'm a young person. You know, treat me with some bloody respect. You know, and I, I think it's just to, and I, I'm all for respecting elders. You know, I, I, I'm for respecting people, but respect goes two ways. You know, and you can't treat people like that. You can't treat people like they're dirt. And I, I haven't seen that guy since. I mean, he, he could literally be dead for all I know, and I couldn't care less to be frank with you. And I don't care for him. You know, I don't care. And I, I've had similar experiences, similar experiences with other people in my family, and I don't care. You know, I don't have hard feelings. I don't hate them. I just move on because life. Life is literally too short, and life as a sub five is hard enough without your family breathing down your damn neck. Um, well, this guy wouldn't be breathing down your neck; he'd be breathing down your ass, probably. Where's face is positioned, but that's not my point. Anyway, um, I apologise for being late on the upload. Yes, I was sick, which is very—I mean, it's unfortunate for me. I'm actually getting possibly uh, nasal surgery or like septum surgery. I think I might have a deviated septum, but that's that would be its own video if I do that. I do have some announcements I want to make before the video ends, so um, one of them is I'm actually going on holiday. Uh, I haven't talked about this. I, I made a community. Oh, I, I mentioned this in a video, actually, I did. Uh, I do remember. I was going to say I didn't mention it, but I did. Uh, I was talking about Berlin, and I was like, oh, I, I'm actually going to go to Berlin for a holiday just for myself for, like, two nights. Um, and I booked that, and I'm also going somewhere else. I'm not going to say where, um, but I'm going to another city in Europe. I'm doing, like, two nights there, two nights in Berlin. Uh, so it'll be a surprise. I'm going to vlog the whole thing. I'm going to video it and make a little video of it. We'll see if it comes out all right. And I've also decided I want to do IRL live streaming again because I did that in Liverpool and I had a lot of fun. And I had a lot of fun doing that in Liverpool. So I'm probably going to do that again. Um, and the, I'm going to do one in each city. So I'm going to do two IRL live streams. So if you missed the first one, don't worry too much about it. It will be in European time. Uh, but I'm going to say I think this might change. I'll make community posts close to the day. But it should be the 10th of April and then the 13th of April maybe or it might actually it might be the 11th or the 14th I'll see it'll be like around the 11th or 12th of April I'll do these live streams so anyway anyway that's pretty much it so wherever you are in the world uh good morning good afternoon good evening and good night and I will see you next time bye